One of the things that made me fall in love with programming was the idea that I could take my own problem and solve it with code. And uh, to be honest, I haven't done a lot of that lately, uh, with one exception. So uh, a few weeks ago, I made a video of uh, me making a karaoke queue management application. Um, and I, I wrote that in fresh Dino TypeScript. Uh, and it was really fun. I had a really great time. And I got to try fresh and learn something new along the way, which was a really great experience. Um, but outside of that, I don't feel like I've been coding to scratch my own itch or solve my own problems very much lately. And I think that has been leading a little bit to burnout. So um, my wife and I are going to do a challenge called 75 Soft. And I thought it would be fun to build an app to help us track that. So it's a bit of a habit tracker type application. Um, and that's what we're going to build today. I haven't built anything with Svelte 5. I really like Svelte. So I think now will be a great time to fumble my way through Svelte 5. Um, on that note, this might not be the most uh, correct implementation of a Svelte 5 application. Um, but, you know, stick with me and we'll have something finished by the end of it that you can use and play around with and continue building on. So, um, yeah, we're going to get started. So let me move this over. Okay, we have this. Uh, so I'm going to run mpm uh, create vite at latest. And I'm going to create a vite project. Uh, it's not going to be called vite project. We're going to call it 75 soft. And the reason I'm choosing vite over SvelteKit, I just want a client side application. I don't want to worry about SvelteKit servers. I don't really want to worry about plugging into SvelteKit. All of this stuff should work fine. Um, with just a client-side application. We'll store our data in local storage. Uh, one of the things I thought about doing was a mobile app, but to get it on my wife's phone, excuse me, and my own phone for that matter, I would have to get that to test flight and go through all the hoops to get things ready for test flight, and it just it didn't seem worth it. So we're just going to build a web app instead. Um, so I'm choosing Svelte. Uh, I want Svelte 5, so that should be what we get. We want TypeScript. So let's go ahead and go into 75 soft npm install and npm run dev. Let's just make sure this boots up. And then I'm going to go ahead and projects, YouTube, 75 soft, open up another tab to that. Okay, cool. looks like it's running. Let's just make sure it actually is. Cool. We have V and Svelte. Um, yeah, this looks good. So I'm not going to use Vim this time. Uh, in the fresh video, I used Vim, and I even mentioned that I got some feedback that maybe Vim wasn't the easiest thing to follow. And then and I, I did a video with fresh and Vim and heard the same feedback again. So um, I'm going to try to use VS Code instead. So what we're going to do is we'll go here. We want projects, YouTube, 75 soft. OK. So this is our new application. Uh, so we have it here. We have a couple things already. So we have our app Svelte. We'll be modifying this in just a moment. Uh, we have a counter. We can toss this. We don't We don't need this counter for anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Um, our application is going to have some issues, which is great. That's what we want to see. So we can go ahead and remove that. And now we need to uh, change some of this. So I kind of like the idea of the card. We don't need these logos anymore. So we'll go ahead and remove those logos. We'll change the H1 to say something like 75 soft tracker. We'll keep our card. Uh, we'll put another component inside of this. We'll call this a progress component. And this will be the form that you get to update it. So a little bit about the challenge. Uh, it is a challenge to um, not uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, I promise I remember uh, to, to make mindful decisions about eating, to uh, make mindful decisions about alcohol, um, like social settings are OK, but anything else is not. Um, drink three liters of water a day, exercise for at least 45 minutes a day, and then read at least 10 pages of a book a day. That's the one I'm the least worried about. Actually, the eating and alcohol one doesn't sound too bad either, but three liters of water sounds like a lot. And 45 minutes of exercise sounds like a lot as well. So we're going to make a little form to help track those daily. We'll store it in local storage, and then we'll show like a streak so we can check our progress along the way. So yes, yeah, so we'll have a progress uh, component that we're going to put right here. Uh, we can toss this. Uh, we can toss this. And then we don't need any of these anymore. 
Um, we will make a change. I'm going to go ahead and say that our card is going to be a min width of like uh, 80. No, not 80 pixels. We want 80%. Uh, we'll give it a border, one pick, solid black. Border radius, oops, border radius, four pixels. Uh, and if this line right here didn't convince you this already, let me go ahead and tell you, I'm not a designer. Uh, so this might not look pretty. It'll look decent enough to solve its needs and have some color and, you know, but it's not going to be like a super well-designed application. That's not my forte. I'm, there's plenty of people on YouTube who can teach you how to do that. I'm not that person. We're going to have one more component here. Uh, this one's going to be a streak component. Obviously, we haven't made these components yet. Steak. Uh, but we'll make them in just a second. Um, okay, so we have our progress. We have our streak. Uh, this looks good. We'll need to import those. So we can go ahead and say import progress from... Where do we want to import this from? Lib uh, progress.svelte sounds good. Import uh, streak from lib slash streak.svelte. Okay. Uh, the components are going to be the easy part. So we'll go ahead and start with, actually the streak should be really easy. So let's start with that. So we have a streak and what we want to do in our streak is uh, script lang equals TypeScript. So we'll start there. We'll start a new Svelte component. Um, we're gonna want essentially state for our progress. So I'm just gonna assume that we that it exists. It doesn't. We'll build it in a second. Uh, so we are gonna import our global state from. I'm gonna call this progress store dot Svelte, and then it technically will be a dot ts file, uh, but we don't include the ts in the import here. Uh, so I'm going to also create some state using runes and we essentially want to have a streak. So our streak is going to be, you know, if like we've, we've done the challenge the last three days, our streak will be three. So if we did the challenge five days ago and then we missed two days and then we did it the last two days, our streak will be two. That's, it's a streak, just like Duolingo or other applications that keep track of your streak for you. Uh, so we have some state. Let's go ahead and throw that in the bottom here. I'm just going to use some divs. You probably should use something other than divs. Um, but yeah, this is just for me and my wife. So uh, we'll use what we have and not think too much about semantic HTML. Uh, out of 75, 75 days. Okay. So with this in mind, we have something. Uh, our code won't compile because we're missing things here and we don't have our progress component, but we should have something for our streak, right? So let's go ahead and make a new file. And uh, let's go ahead and do our progress store.svelte.ts. And this extension's a little weird. Um, so we have .svelte.ts. So it's a TypeScript file. But to use our runes in our uh, TypeScript code, I believe we have to have the .svelte extension, like pre-extension on there. It's a little, little strange. Um, but it, it makes sense, I guess. It, we needed to, to tell Svelte that this is a file it needs to look at for runes. Um, but before we get into runes, let's just create some interfaces. So we have an interface for a day. So a day has those five challenges. So we need to eat well. We need to um, be mindful of alcohol consumption. We need to drink three liters of water. We need to exercise for 45 minutes. And we need to read 10 pages of a book. That sounds so easy. Um, okay, export. Uh, we're going to create another interface here. This one's going to be called progress. And this is going to be the type that we are um, storing as our global state for this. So we have items. Uh, and these are going to be a record. And it's going to be a string and a day. The key for this is going to be really weird. We're going to have to write something to create a key. And we essentially want to use a day, but we don't care about the time in a date. We just care about the month, date, and year. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of uh, string formatting to come up with that key. Okay, so we have two interfaces. Um, I'm going to go ahead and define what an empty day looks like and export that as well, just in case we need it. So eat false. This is actually a really interesting pattern that I've picked up from Go 
where if you define a struct in Go, um, a type, like a, a data structure in Go, basically, if you're unfamiliar with them, um, it gives you essentially what, what is considered a null value, or an, not, not null, but an empty value. So if you have a struct and you don't have a pointer to a struct, that struct can't be nil. It has to be a struct. Um, same with any value in Go. And the idea here is like, uh, you don't have to worry about null pointers unless you're actually working with pointers. Otherwise you just get an empty, whatever, an empty string, an empty struct, an empty slice. Well, that's kind of a tricky one, but the point being that you uh, have an empty object to work with. And I really like this pattern. So uh, it'll help us with some of our types as well. So we don't have to worry about things potentially being undefined, uh, which seems really helpful. So we have an empty day defined. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create our progress state. So we're going to use the state rune. I'm going to give it a type. We're going to say it is progress. And progress, based on our interface above, is a uh, map. Uh, it's an object with a key of items and some records uh, associated with them, which we can leave as empty for now. Uh, let's come up with a way to convert that uh, key. So we can export const uh, get day key maybe. Um, this needs to be like this. And we're gonna take in a date. And what we wanna do is we just want the uh, essentially month, date, and year. So to do that, we can do date.toiso string. And this is gonna return like 01, uh dash oh one dash twenty twenty five uh t and then like the timestamp after that and what we can do is we can just split on the t and take the first index uh, the zeroth index i should say sorry and with that in mind we can uh we can use that key function um, i'm gonna make one more helper here because we're gonna be working on a single day at a time and our progress is like a it's the entire challenge it's it's 75 or more days uh potentially so i'm going to just create a function called uh get day and we're going to get a date uh it's going to return a day um if progress is equal to null which i don't think it can be no it shouldn't be so i don't i don't even think we need that um so let's let's not let's return progress .items, get day key yeah we'll go ahead and use that get day key function we'll pass in the date and if we don't have anything we just want to return an empty day so we can start with an empty day all right I feel pretty good about this so we have our our uh, uh, streak here we have our progress store we're importing progress I guess we technically don't need to do that yet because we're not using it but we will need to in a minute. Um, and then what else do we have? So, uh, streak don't spell. Why is that? It's angry. Why is that angry? Oh, is it source lib? No, I'm not sure why that's complaining. Source lib. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we'll deal with that in a second. Let's go ahead and create another file. Uh, this one's going to be progress.svelte. And the progress one's going to be a little trickier. Actually, quite quite a bit trickier. So we'll start with our lang here. And what do we want to do? Let's just uh, create our markup for now. So we have a div. Uh, we're going to wrap everything in a div. We have some labels. Um, the first thing I'm going to let you do is select a different day. And we'll use an input type date. Uh, we'll set the value equal to something. And we'll set an on change equal to something, too. Um, we'll come back and fill these in, maybe? Or, yeah, we'll come back and fill these in. Uh, we'll add another label. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste because that'll make this way quicker. Label, 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 label. I think that should be good. So instead of select a different day, this will be eight healthy, healthy. 
Uh, good judgment with alcohol. Three liters of water. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, 45 minutes of exercise. And then the last one is 10 pages of a book. Nice and easy. Uh, okay. I don't want these to be data inputs though. So uh, this is gonna be a checkbox. In fact, all of these are gonna be checkboxes. So we'll change that. Uh, and if we change these to checkboxes, value doesn't make sense anymore. We want checked instead. Okay, so that seems pretty good. Uh, we'll add some styles down here at the bottom. One nice thing about Svelte, if you're unfamiliar with it, the styles here are scoped to the component. So we can like just target label and it will only affect labels in this component. We don't have to worry about it uh, leaking outside of this component. Uh, we'll give these something like 1.2 EM, display block, um, text align center. Give these a margin bottom so there's some space in between them. And then, uh, I don't know, font weight, bold, why not? Okay. Um, and then uh, let's see, input type equals date. Okay, also display block. Um, this is, I want this to be full width since it's a calendar select. So we'll do with 100%, uh, margin zero auto. And I think my reasoning for that is going to be that um, on mobile, uh, I don't think it respects the width percent for iOS and Safari. So I think margin zero auto might help center it. I'm not sure. I'm also, I guess I'm not super worried about what it looks like on mobile for this tutorial as long as it works. So yeah, let's, let's leave the WebKit stuff out too then. Uh, and I won't try to fuss with that because that is not an area of my expertise. Okay. So we have our progress. We have our app. Interesting. What is the complaint here? Has no default export. Interesting. Okay, I am not sure what I've done wrong. Uh, let's, let me just run this again. Okay, cool. Outside of the fact that I have unexpected tokens for values here, um, we'll just remove that. And I guess we need to remove the on change. Uh, we'll need to remove it for all of those. Okay, so instead what we're gonna do here is we'll go and grab all of these and set those equal to true. And then we'll grab all of our on changes. And what we'll do is we'll just provide a empty function. And then I'll remove this value for now because I'm not sure what that needs to look like. Unexpected token. Do we need to wrap them? Oh, oh, yep. Yeah. Oops. My bad. So we come here, we grab these, and we change those like so. Okay, cool. Um, better. Why is it not reloading? Also, I probably don't need to. Okay, cool. Hey, that uh. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, we might change it a little bit, but that, for the most part, that's it. Hey, that's full width, that's great. Uh, streak is zero out of 75. Okay, we have a lot going on here. So I mentioned that we wanna store things in local storage. I'm gonna create a uh, file here called localstorage.svelte.ts. And actually, I'm not sure if this one will need to be a Svelte file. I don't think it will. So I'm actually gonna remove the Svelte here. I don't really want this to be Svelte related if I can help it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is grab type day, type progress from the progress store. Feeling good about that. I'm gonna export a class called local storage service. And this class is just gonna facilitate communication with local storage. 
Um, and the reason I'm wrapping this up in a class instead of just having like the consumer call local storage directly, uh, I want to set things like a storage key um, and just make this, oh, not 75 store, let's do 75 soft and make it just a little easier to facilitate the uh, communication with local storage and the types that we're expecting to get back from it. So we just really need two actions, right? We need to be able to get progress and then we need to be able to save progress. So the next one will be save progress. And this is gonna take in a progress of type progress. And this is actually gonna be the easiest one. So let's just write it really quick. Window.localStorage uh, set item this.storage key. And then we just wanna JSON stringify uh, progress. Should be good. This one's not going to be really any harder. It's just a little longer. Uh, so I want to get like the, the raw value that we have. Um, so we'll say window.localStorage to get item this.storage storage key. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we don't have a truthy value for raw, then we will return essentially an empty progress. So we have items, bada bing. Uh, if that's not the case, then we'll return JSON parse raw uh, as progress. Um, maybe not the cleanest solution in the world, but you know, again, I'm happy with it. Okay, so with our local storage service in place, what we can start to do is we can start to look at some of these uh, the the component logic and honestly a lot of it's going to be effects so if we go back to our streak uh, maybe we work on this one first um, although this is kind of weird to work on we'll work on this one second because you we could work on it but you wouldn't be able to see it until we get the progress one done i guess so uh yeah let's start with the progress one instead all right this one is gonna be kind of big so we're going to import our local storage service because we are going to need access to our local storage service. Um, what else do we need? You know what? I think I will leave the rest of our imports for now instead of trying to assume what those might be. Uh, and we can just get started. So the very first thing I want our component to do is I want to register an effect. And really what I want to do, so the way that, hang on, sorry, one thing at a time. Okay, so we have an effect. What I want this effect to do is I essentially want to, anytime progress changes, that progress state changes while this component is mounted, I want to save it to local storage. This is a true side effect. Not There could not be a better name for this uh, rune in this case because this is a true side effect. And the idea is I just wanna, anytime there's a change, persist that to local storage. So we have a const local storage service storage service, new local storage service, okay. And then if object.values progress.items, okay, we've imported progress, feeling good. Formatting's a little off, but whatever. And we wanna get the length of that. And if it's not equal to zero, then uh, let's write it. And the reason we're checking here is we don't want to write an empty progress. Like we don't want to um, essentially overwrite something. So if we don't have our state and it's you know empty, we, we don't want to overwrite what we have. So remember, our initial value for our state is empty. Um, so we're checking to make sure like you know there's no reason to write an empty state. Does format work? Hey, it does. Okay, cool. Uh, great. So that's, that's the very first effect that we're gonna write. Uh, it's really straightforward. And the way that these effects work are really neat. So if we were writing this in React, we'd have to, this has changed thankfully, but back when I was writing React, back when I was writing React a lot, uh, you would have to add a dependency array here. And then I would have to say, well, I want this anytime progress changes. And the way Svelte works is that it will look at the AST that gets compiled here. And it will say, hey, he's looking at progress. We need to make sure that this effect uh, is ran whenever progress changes uh, because progress is essentially a dependency of this effect. Okay, uh, so we need to do some things. I wanna go ahead and populate that date dropdown um, based on today. So I'm just gonna get 
the current date and store that in today. Uh, we are allowing people to change this. So what we need to do is we essentially need some state. So state today. Uh, and then I'm going to use that today value some more, which is why we're breaking it out. So hmm. let's go ahead and also when this component mounts, we'll check progress.items. We'll use get day key. Um, and I'm already seeing a lot of leaky code. So like, like, should this really be, maybe this, this logic here shouldn't be, um, in this component, but whatever, we'll continue with what we have. And I, I really just want to check and make sure that if this is null, then we're setting it equal to an empty day. So we have something to work with. So get day key today is equal to empty day. Uh, exercise is missing. Oh, I, uh, X, E, X, E, R. Wow. I butchered that. And no, none of you told me that I butchered that. How fun exercise. Okay, cool. Uh, it feels better. Also, can't we do this with the null coalesce operator? So get day key today. Would that be this empty day? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah, let's just do that. It's way nicer. Okay, cool. Um, uh, okay. So we wrote a little, uh, method, a function that will give us a single day. And since we're working on a single day at a time, we're going to want to use that. So we're going to introduce another rune here, active day, and we're going to use the derived rune. Um, and it's going to be a day. So we're going to pass a type of day to it and we're going to call get day date. Okay. Uh, we need to import that. Great. So now that we have our active day, um, I think all we really need to do here would be set up some, uh, on change listeners for our events. So We'll come back to that because that's going to be a little bit more involved. So in, in the simplest way forward, we'll go back to our date input and I'm going to set value and it's date dot two ISO string. We just went over this not too long ago. Maybe this should be broken out into a helper. Maybe that's a fun project for you to do if you'd like to continue with this. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So we have an on change that we're gonna need to build. Um, so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll come back to that. That seems hairy. Uh, okay, so check. So we have active day. This is our derived. Um, so we just need to map these, right? So this will be eat. Uh, these are all active days. So the top one will be alcohol. This one will be water. This one will be exercise. This one will be book. Nice and easy. Um, this is gonna be a little different. So what we can do is we can grab all of these. And really what we wanna do is say active day dot thing is equal to the opposite. So active day dot, uh, sorry, alcohol. And then we come back into all of these. And this one is eat. This one's eat. That one's alcohol. That one's alcohol. This one and this one are water. This one and this one are exercise. This one and this one are book. Okay, feeling pretty good about that. So now as we're tinkering with these, actually, are we at the point where we should be able to see in our local storage? Clear this out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we, we are persisting an empty day into our local storage because of this. Um, and then, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it is an empty day. It's, it's our items, our progress with today's date, uh, with our empty day. So if we, yeah, look at that. So we marked eight healthy and now eat is true. So if we do three liters of water, water is true. Um, so yeah, we add these things and we'll have to fix our streak at some point to get that working. But in the meantime, 
uh, let's get our change date function working because I think this is probably going to be one of the meatiest pieces. And actually, I guess it's not that bad. So I'm going to pull this out into a function. I'm going to call it on change date. And it doesn't exist yet, so we're going to get red squiggles. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here and create this function. So const on change date. And what does this need to do? So this is going to get an event. And I don't know a great way to handle this, uh, but I was messing around with events a couple days ago in TypeScript. And again, I haven't done a ton of uh, front end recently. A lot of it's been, a lot of my work has been Go lately. So I'm a little fuzzy on some of this, but um, I essentially want to get the target. And with an event, it seems that you can't, uh, sorry, I want to get the event target value. And the event itself, so this on change date gets an event, uh, but it seems that target doesn't have a value um, because it's not necessarily known as an HTML input element. Like the target could be anything, right? So what we need to do is we need to cast it. Uh, HTML input element. There might be a cleaner way to do this. This is what I found and it worked well for me. Um, so your mileage may vary. And if you're a TypeScript expert and you know what the best solution is here, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to get it figured out for the next time I run into this. Okay, so I'm going to create another const. This one's going to be called selected date. And we're going to get new date target dot value. So we'll get the value from that on change date input. And uh, so... With our new date constructor, we can pass in a string, which is what we're gonna get. And that string should be formatted so that it works like we would expect it to. Um, now that we have this selected date, I'm also gonna say date is equal to new date target dot value. Uh, and this date is the date state that we have up here. So this will inform our um, uh, component that it needs to re-render essentially. So we have our date. Um, I'm gonna create an items struct. And the reason I'm doing this is I, if I spread these items and then reassign progress later, I'm only making one stateful update to progress. Um, but in theory, I could be making a lot of stateful updates into progress here. And the reason why is that if you go back 10 days for your streak to work the way that I'm planning to calculate the streak, I need to put in empty days for every day from now to uh, 10 days ago. Obviously skipping over the ones that you've already put something in. So basically if there's already a day, don't do anything. But if there isn't a day, we need to fill it with empty days so we can keep our streak counting going. I promise this all makes sense in my head. So hopefully if you're following along, it makes sense to you as well. Okay, so um, we'll spread progress items into a new items object. Uh, I wanna get now. So we have a target, um, so oh, not new, now, new date. So that's our target date. And then uh, how do I wanna do this? Okay, we'll use a while loop. This is actually really weird and probably not the best way to do it, but kind of fun. So we're gonna use that date key and we're essentially gonna compare them. So we want to date key now. Basically when the selected date is not uh, and keep in mind, selected date's not our state. It's just a um, uh, a value that we have a hold of right here in our scope. So while they're not equal, um, we need to do some things. Uh, and we're essentially wanting to do a check. So if items dot, not dot, sorry, items sub get day key, uh, selected date. So we'll get the selected date. And if it is equal to null, um, let's assign it. Get day key selected date. And again, empty day. Glad we pulled that out to a type. Uh, obviously this will run forever. So we need to make sure it doesn't. So we'll do selected day dot set date, uh, selected date dot get date plus one. And I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done this before where if you, um, so like let's say it's the last day of the month 
and you add plus one to the date, it will roll over to the next month for you and the next year if necessary and so on and so forth. So I think that should work like we would expect it to. Okay, so yeah, we have our while loop. Uh, we're still in our on change listener. So um, I'm just gonna do another check. This might be excessive here, but just to be safe, I wanna make sure that if the date that we end on is uh, null. Actually, yeah, I don't think we need that. Never mind. Okay, uh, but we do need to set progress.items equal to items, and that should trigger a re-update for progress. Okay, that was a lot. Let's see. So I refreshed the page. I'm looking at my local storage. This still works like we would expect it to. That's great. Uh, and then let's say if I go back two days, one, two. I went back more than two days. I went back three days. But yeah, okay, cool. So they are there like we would expect them to, which is great. Um, and they're not in order, but I don't feel like they necessarily have to be. Uh, well, that's going to be weird for streaks, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure something out. Okay, so feeling pretty good about that. Let's see. Uh, so we have our types. We have an effect. We have our new date. We have our date state. Uh, we are assigning this if it is null so we're doing a null aware assignment um active day is derived day on change yeah i th think we're pretty good with that okay so we're populating it so let's go work on the streak piece i think so we're back in our streak component um, it's this little piece down here at the bottom. We'd like for this to update. Uh, so again, what we're going to do, we're going to leverage that progress that we've uh, imported already. We're going to use an effect um, rune, not a hook. It's going to be a hard thing to not say. Okay, uh, let's just nice and old fashioned brute force this. So let total equals zero object dot entries okay yeah okay this is the the strings not being in order is going to be tricky so what we can do is we can sort them uh a b what does this look like a is okay so that's the key that's the value um sure wh whatever that's fine uh so what we're going to compare days right so we want to sort by days so const a day is equal to new date a zero because the key is the zeroth index const b day equals new date b zero okay uh and then we just want to return a dot no a day dot get time minus b day dot get time i think that should work like we would expect now that they're sorted, uh, we can for each, and then our streak stuff should work like we would expect it to. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and destructure these here. So we have key, and then we have uh, day. I guess it's technically the value, but we're gonna call it day. If day.eat and day.book and day.water and day dot maybe I should have a helper function and day dot exercise. Yeah, the helper function would have been good because I almost made a typo there. Uh, total plus equals one, else total equals zero. And we just need to, so basically what we're doing is we're going through each day. I guess we don't necessarily need the key here, but that's okay. Um, and if we've done all the things, we increment the value of total by one. And if we run into a day, since it's sorted, if we run into a day where the these things aren't met, we set the total equal to zero. Um, this almost works like we would expect it to, but there is one more piece that we need to do. So we are in our effect hook and we need to set streak equal to total. 
Another interesting thing here, and part of the reason why I am choosing to use a, a variable called total, um, if you have an effect and it constantly updates state, like multiple updates to the same state value several times uh, within a very short span, um, Svelte will actually, I'm not sure if it's a warning or an error, but it's, it's not something that they're intending for you to do. So I think the path forward that they expect you to do is to use something like an intermediate variable and then assign the state down here at the bottom, uh, which is what we're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna just clear all of our local storage, refresh the page, we get an empty one, one, two, three, four, five. Streak went up, feel pretty good about that. Uh, so I'm very confused why that's the one highlighted. One, two, three, four, five streak is two now if we go back here and we check all of these the streak shouldn't change right okay sweet it didn't change because it's not a streak so we went back four days we checked that one three days back we have an empty day we can take a look at that so if we look here uh so we went this one is all good this one's all good so that's our two-day streak this one's empty um so that's the first and even though we have the 31st checked, the first is there's a, there's a gap in them all being correct. So in theory, we should be able to come back here to one, check all of these, and in doing so, our streak should become four. There we go. Awesome, I actually, I think that's it. So this is all in local storage. So from here, I can you know pull up the app every day and uh, it'll pre-populate with the current day and it should help me keep track of my streak. Um, another nice thing about it being in local storage is if I need to debug and figure out what day, not debug, I guess, but <laughs> debug my habit tracking and figure out what day did I miss, I can pull up local storage and just find the one with the empty key or write a little script to help me highlight the one that is missing an empty key. So yeah, I think this is just about it. Um, actually, yeah, I can't think of anything else that we'd want to do. So I hope this was fun. Uh, this was the nice little trip for me down the Svelte 5 lane. Still not sure why that's complaining, but it seems to be working, so whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, learning a little bit about runes and getting the uh, experience with them um, to move some of my Svelte 4 applications over to Svelte 5 at some point. I will say this feels different. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's bad, but it, it doesn't feel felty anymore as much maybe i guess it's nice because it's explicit right and there's some benefits for it being explicit but i think part of the thing that i really liked about svelte is that it just kind of gets out of your way so you just write code and it, it behaves magically which normally i don't actually like magic and in, in programming but it behaves magically like you would expect it to knowing that it's a reactive framework um, this is a little more explicit so it feels a little more in the way but I guess it explicit's always nice, especially when you're reading code um, instead of writing it. And we spend way more time reading code than we do writing it. And then uh, it probably is easier on the compiler too, I would imagine, because I, 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 these are probably, I don't know, um, my hunch is that they're essentially just no-op functions in terms of what they actually do if they were to be ran. And uh, we're not gonna see that in here because these are just index types, but um, assuming they're like no op functions or something really small that doesn't actually execute code at runtime and these just get like removed by the compiler, they're essentially markers. That's my hunch. Um, so it's probably easier for the compiler and maybe it's allowing the Svelte team to do more things going forward, which is exciting too, but it just feels a little weird. Um, the, the effect one definitely feels a little weird. Derived. I mean, okay, it's better than this, right? So, so like, uh, yeah. Um, I, I guess I don't have any major complaints about derived. The state one, that's fine, whatever. If you have to wrap your state in the state uh, um, rune, I guess that's fine. Uh, there are a couple other ones, too, that we didn't use here. I think, um, like, host, spell, five, runes. Let's see what our options are. Uh, no. Yeah, okay, cool, runes. So there's state, derived, effect. We use these three. Oh, I guess we should have probably used props, but I'm not sure what I would change to use props. I guess maybe the streak could take in the progress via a prop, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, this is how you define props. This is actually one that I'm excited about because uh, if you want to pass in a prop that is class, you don't have to do like class as class, C-L-A-Z-Z -Z anymore, uh, which is nice. Um, bindable, so this is the, uh, allows data to flow up from a child to a parent. This isn't something you should do often. I genuinely can't think of a use case off the top of my head when you would want to do this, but I guarantee there's a use case. Um, so it's nice that they support it. Um, oh, the inspect one. Yeah, I guess we could have used this too. Uh, the inspect room, just if you haven't seen it yet, is essentially uh, a console log that uh, runs every time a value changes. Um, so an instead of uh, using like a use effect, and then console log, or sorry, not use effect, using an effect rune, and then console logging in the um, the effect callback. Uh, you can just use an inspect rune instead. Um, and then host provides access to the host element for like dispatching custom events and fun stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we only use these. And for what it's worth, I think that most of your Svelte applications will probably be fine with just these four. Anyways, I am rambling as I'm ought to do. Um, so this is up on, uh, this will be up on my GitHub. Uh, so you can find it at github.com slash Brad Seipert. That's B-R-A-D-C-Y-P-E-R-T slash 75-S-O-F-T, uh, soft, 75-soft. Um, so yeah, there's the code. Have fun with it. And if you followed along, let me know what your thoughts are. Was this helpful? Um, are you enjoying runes? How do you, are you kind of mixed feelings about them like I am? I'd love to talk to someone about it, so... Let me know.